What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? We are back, y'all, with the Tuffy Talk Live Show. Feeling good, feeling those victories, man. Football, basketball, you name it. We got them all over the place. And we got a special treat, actually, for the first time in a long time. We have the entire Whoa. Tuffy Talk crew. The entire crew, y'all. Lindsay, myself, Greg, Kins, Michael, Macon. I feel like I feel like it's the Brady, the Brady bunch right now. It looks like it, yeah. No kidding, guys. I gotta look. I gotta look this way. So yeah, whatever. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> what's going on down there? Hey, what's up, dude? Yeah. 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 Michael. It's really good to see you. The Kinsey girl high power five. on the left side. Girl power. Yeah, I gotta go like extra long arm to reach uh, Lindsay over there. Greg, yeah. Greg, <laughs> Greg, high five. What are you doing? <laughs> Okay. How's the weather down there, Macon? Oh, no, right. smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, y'all, start. If, if you're if, if you're listening to the show right now, I really do feel for you because you're missing out. But anyway, y'all, if we had three uh, more, we could play like virtual tic tac toe. No, oh, that'd be so fun. That's that'd a great awesome. idea. That's a great idea. All right, we need three other viewers to tune in right now. Uh, <laughs> no, I just no, I'm just messing. It's like uh, what was that stupid game show? Celebrity. Uh, it was like oh, Hollywood Tech Squares. Show. Hollywood Squares. There you go. Oh, that was my favorite. That's what we need to do. We need to do an NC State version of that one night. Oh, I, love it. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, though, uh, <laughs> preacher man coming in here. I'm game. I'm game. <laughs> um. Anyway, y'all, so I appreciate everybody already tuning into the chat. Uh, Michelle, uh, my mama, uh, Nick, uh, Hunter, uh, Preacher Man, appreciate all y'all tuning in. If you Your have been with about us to take that L in fantasy football, I'm just saying. Ooh, oh, wow. Okay. Shots fired. <laughs> uh, anyway. Has anybody uh, mentioned the newest in, uh, information? We got They got free chicken tonight. They got free yes. chicken. Yeah. Free Big chicken. Ball. Two missed free throws. Let's Big go. Ball. Good job, Wolf. Always Nation. the biggest yeah. basketball win. Right. Oh, 100 percent That's all you that's that's all you come for. And we cleared the bench, got our uh got all those guys in. It was a good game. Well, yeah. 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 yeah, we'll definitely talk about it here. Uh well, at, one know. more announcement. One more now. Okay, well, hold on. I'll let you go, 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 ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Greg. I said one more announcement. Welcome back, Michael Tracy. The that's new... what I'm gonna say. Yeah, yes. there you go. welcome back. Married man. Michael. Thank you. That was Thank very you. life, man. How is it, man? Tell me. Uh doing good so far. It's so far. It's only been two weeks. You got a long ways to go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no. Uh, is, is that is that is that left ring feel? I mean, it, it, I, I'm telling you, man. That that, that yeah. Hold my hand up. Man, it's so weird. Heavy. It is heavy. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. That's no. why I got wood. It's a lot lighter. Oh. My dad got uh, <laughs> one of those rubber ones. You there you know. go. Um, anyway, y'all, so so once again, if you have been with us for you know the drill, but if you haven't been with us for any comments, questions, thoughts, concerns, whatever it may be, put them in the chat. We will get to many, as many of them as, as we can here today. But we have a lot to get through as we got this uh, opening night win versus Citadel. We got uh, the huge, huge win over Miami, which we're going to be talking about, along with some other things which we actually have left over from last week, which we couldn't even get to. Uh, but let's get right to it. Since we got the whole crew here again, just got done here with a uh, Great win for NC State over Citadel, um, 72 to, to 59. You know, I know that probably a lot of state fans here in the chat are going to be kind of split on it, saying, well, we didn't really get started off that great. We only scored 72. We only beat them by 13, whatever it may be. Um, so, you know, Michael, I know you were kind of tweeting during the game. And since uh, we haven't had you on for a while, I want to give you the opportunity, my man, to give us your first thoughts on this game, my man. Yeah, no, I, it's the uh, three starting guards did not play well. Um, you know, God, Marcel, that's your first thought. <laughs> I, right. No, I, Mary it, life has changed you it so is, much. It right? is. Whoa, <laughs> did we wait? We got first thoughts. We suck. No, but I'm saying, <laughs> despite that, you know, it was still a pretty easy win, uh, easy win for us. So, you know, I'm, I'm not not too worried, not too worried about those guys. Especially more so. Like we know what we've gotten him. He he he'll be fine. And you know the front court was impressive tonight between uh, Diara and Burns and even Middlebrooks had um a, a bunch of good plays. So. Didn't Diara have a double double? He did. He did. Double double. Yeah. Oh. Ten and fourteen. I thought O'Connell played pretty well at, at times though. At, at the point. Yeah. And DJ he Burns. Did. He he hit I think four four threes. Yeah. Distributed so, the ball pretty nicely yeah. too. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Megan, any additional thoughts here, man? I will say somebody asked for my thoughts because I have so many. Um, <laughs> I was like, well, I was like, oh man, this is good stuff. Um, uh, I here's my first thought is I missed college basketball mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Missed it. I love college football too, but it's just that's the home feel of basketball. <laughs> but from being Tobacco Road, that I miss. Um, so I thought you saw a pretty good season opener for state relatively speaking i thought you know the line was 20 points 21 points for state favor they had only 13 at the end of the game you know that was you know we like to see them put a little more points you would like to see them in theory play um or maybe help hold them to a little bit lower score but more so i like to see state score a little more points there because i know state can be a high fired offense um, but you know it's a first season opener i thought the first half you could tell things were just kind of a little bit all over the place. It, yeah. was, it was sloppy. I thought three point shooting the first half was terrible. I don't know how many. I thought we felt like we were four for fourteen five. at the half. Yeah, not good, not good at all. And uh, it was like, what is that like? This thirty? Yeah, like under thirty. Yeah, to under me, 30. it's not. If you're in the twenties, it's not great. Um, I thought actually it was worse than that. Um, actually, better than I thought it was. But you know, positively, I thought. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's a it's a win for state. You're one and zero the season. I, I think Citadel looked like they'll be a pretty good team. I actually kind of thought they might be. They they had some good players on their team. Um, so I thought that was a solid opener game opponent for state. I thought, you know, going by the players, you know, DJ Burns back like he never left. Right? I mean, oh yeah, so status quo, um, burning down the house. Um, he was, you know, really looked really good. I thought, you know, what did he score the first like four buckets of the game? So I thought, I definitely the first three. Um, but he looked good, solid, really good plays. He didn't look necessarily as simple as said he thought maybe he looked more nimble than others, um, than he had in the past. He just kind of looked the same to me, which is good. He just picked up where he left off. Casey got was a little cold at first. The second half, he kind of got into the flow and his groove and picked up and he had some shots there. Um, but I'll tell you, man, um, the little things you heard from the exhibition were interesting because what I saw, what, what I saw this game, when I heard about the exhibition, I saw flashes from Dennis Parker. You know, he's a freshman. You saw the athleticism and the blocks, um, the bounciness. So that dude, that dude, you know, rebounds and has athleticism there. Um, he's gonna get, he's gonna get his at some point. It's just you can see the pieces are there. Um, I thought. Was interesting in a positive way. They said McConnell, I mean O'Connell, had no, um, you know, had no, uh, he did not play well the exhibition, and you could argue he was the best player of the game offensively for state. I mean that. Having said yeah. that, not necessarily in the rebounding category because that was second. Secondly, like Dr. and I don't recall him Dr. but the announcers called him Diara, Diara, Diara. I don't know how it's pronounced. I want to. I heard it. Both, I heard it both ways. Yeah. If I've heard a name, lot of different things. His name is Diara. I was really unfortunate because someone's going to call him Diarrhea, and uh, <laughs> someone's going to. Um, but he didn't play like he didn't play like Diarrhea. He played like he played great. So he played. I mean, that's 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 uh, he played really well. I thought. I thought my word. My thought was he is going to be a factor this season for yeah. state. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, having 14 rebounds, 10 points, and on a two season three-pointers. On a season two three-pointers. Yeah, he, 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 the whole year last year. he is a true stretch four there, right? Yeah. I mean, I thought there's one play there. I think it was seven, eight minutes left in the game. He was, you know, it was him and Burns at the four, at the four positions and, uh, you know, or the sit forward and power forward and center position. There was some nice interior passing between the forwards, and I was like, I was like, ooh, this is nice. <laughs> like, I thought I thought it was like little things like that that are really nice. Um, you know, I thought I think the areas to improve would be three point shooting. I thought um we got we still got some sloppy fouls there a little bit. Um, but you know, beyond that, it's not a whole lot that I'm like we 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 were ta- we were really bad at. Um really it's three point shooting consistently in the first half through the first half and then Maybe foul trouble a little bit, not foul trouble, but getting fouls. Um, yeah, I mean, so we I, ended up shooting thirty six percent from three point line, which isn't right. Bad. 
I mean, because, because I think we shot well in the second half, relatively Correct. speaking. Yeah. yeah. Well, we shoot close to forty percent in the second half. Yeah, I mean, for the game, we shot almost forty-four percent, and and I think you'll take that most nights. Um, well, if we yeah. were if we shot forty-four percent for the game and we shot under thirty the first half, that was a really good three-point shooting second half. That's what I'm getting. So I feel the team just kind of had to get in the groove a little bit. But one thing I also thought, and this is my last thought, Layton, is there's depth on this team you did not have last year. Oh, and you can yeah, see it, like, percent. like who, like if you had, like, I, I joked about, like, you know, yeah, the game, you know, before we get the football game, like how did anybody, if anybody had Jordan Poole touchdown reception on their bingo card? Let me know. Like, if anybody had Michael O'Connell and Diara being like two of your best players on the game. <clears throat> You know, I, we need to be friends because I did not. I didn't think that was going to happen, <laughs> and uh, so that was. It just to me, it's like you really don't know any night. You kind of know bread and butter. Yeah. You're going like DJ Burns. You know, back like he never left. You know, he's picked up where he left off. You can kind of count on Casey. Um, you know, consistently for scoring, he picked it up. But Burns, if Burns is off, or if Casey's off, or whoever, like. I, I feel like comfortable. You can think, okay, there's going to be like at least two guys here who are going to get theirs each night. It's just a matter of can you get a more than a couple guys to score and play good defense? I thought the blocks were good on this. I thought a number that's going to go on. Uh, I'm sorry, I said that was my last five, thought. Five block shots thought. for the game. Five block shots, but a number that is really good 19 assists. 19 nice. assists. Wow. That's big time. That's big time. So. Really good ball movement, really good stuff. Aries I work on is three point shooting and uh maybe lazy, working on lazy fouls. Fouls, you know, but I thought really they played okay defense. They like they played NC State defense, which is not great, but it good. Yeah. Good they held defense, them in fifty nine. Yeah, good defense. Um yeah, and, you know, I thought it was good. I thought I thought they played maybe even better better defense than they did last year already. So just mm-hmm. a point game. So that, that was my thoughts. It was a good opener, I thought. No, yeah. I agree with you. That the defense should have been better. I mean, forty. You you, you let him shoot forty percent for the game. The other, you know, Citadel. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned O'Connell. His fourteen points were off the bench, which is like right. Huge. Like when you can get fourteen points from a guy off the bench, I think you're going to take that most nights. Uh, that yeah. that can be like the, the deciding factor. You know, especially when you start oh, yeah. getting ACC play. And we're not even talking like that. Like Middlebrooks for a guy like right. Jaden Taylor, they didn't have like crazy good nights. But you saw what they can do they just weren't the guy tonight so to speak yeah. so, I, I i think i think this is a team where you could have on any given night like we talk about it this is the seventh year in a row that they're going to have to replace the leading scorer mm-hmm. I, i'm not so sure i know who this team's leading score is going to be right because it feels like it's going to it can be very balanced yeah i don't know man i, I mean like your leading bet is still dj burns in case yeah. you yeah. out there but you know, it really – I mean, like, even though he didn't have a good night, I have no reason to say, yeah, Jaden Taylor could you – know, like, I, he could he could be the leading scorer of the team. I have no idea. She didn't have a night tonight. Oh, I mean, this is, this is a team that could have six six guys, six, seven guys in double figures when it's all – Yeah, seven, and those are th- – those teams are hard to come by. Um, so, if you have a team that is averaging, let's say, four guys and 10-plus points and, you know – Maybe one guy, two guys have better rebounding numbers, and the other one, two guys have better assist numbers. But if you have four guys and double digit scoring, that's a averaging. That's that's that's, that's really good. I <laughs> thought it was the best looking season opener we've had in a while, honestly. Yeah. Like with throughout, like with ev- looking into everything, every aspect of the game, the speed is still there, which Kevin wanted. Um, you've got depth. Like this is probably the most depth team we've had in a while, honestly. That's easily. And it's just, I mean, I'm excited for the season. Really excited. Yeah. You had guys like LJ Thomas and Ernest Ross who were, who were big contributors last year, and they barely saw the court tonight. Yeah. So, I mean. That is a great point. That's a great point, Greg. Nope, where's Ernest? Right? In. So, it's like we have plenty of guys that didn't even, like, really get to contribute as much. I, I think mean, it's like, go ahead. And I was going to say, that for me, the biggest thing about this team is can they gel and can they play as a team, right? Can they everyone accept their roles? And I think if you can get those two things – I think you've got something brewing, and, and, and I honestly, what I saw, I think it's going to work. Oh, I yeah. think it can work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's guys who had roles there, like the rebounding role was really was led by the 
Diara, I guess. And, uh, you know, even like I saw like Marcel, Taylor having some rebounds in there, but like I, you saw roles, right? You already saw that yeah. in, in one game. And it's like Middlebrook's coming off the bench with his skill set. You could see it like that's big time. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like there's like two lineups they could go with at any point they could have a five they sub out and then you got another five and you'd feel pretty good about that and there's not much drop off at least that's what i saw tonight but like you said exhibition game o'connell was off tonight he was on i think just having that depth there is going to help be more consistent in scoring and defense uh you would think and you know those kind of things it's going to be i don't wonder if it, i wonder if it more raises our floor of what we could be yeah. maybe not our ceiling because the only like true like stud to me on the team is dj um right now i don't think it's like know how much dj is a pro he probably could be a pro um um but you know you know what i'm saying i, I feel like it raises the floor for this team what they can do yeah, for sure. I feel like you're right. We don't have a lot of studs, a lot of guys that you say, you know, these are definitely going to be pros. These are definitely going to be guys to watch. But not knowing who the top scorer is going to be can be a bad problem for some people. But here it seems like a good problem. Like you said, we have depth. There's variations of what five guys. Um, <laughs> there's variations it is of not what five the guys roof, man. put out no. there. <laughs> no, it's not. So, yeah, I think um, having that depth and being able to put different guys out there based on who's hot um, and seeing how they work together is a good thing to have. And it's easy to nitpick a season opener and say, I wish this went better and I wish this didn't happen. But you have to realize that this is the first time you're actually seeing this team out there together, not in an exhibition, um, and that you can't judge an entire season on one game. But I do like what I saw depth-wise. I think we have – more players that can play more different roles than what we've had in recent years. And I think that can really help us grow and put other guys out there and kind of utilize those skill sets. Like, yeah, like Lindsay said, I mean, some of the, most of these guys were all on different teams last year, Casey and DJ and LJ. Yeah. yeah I mean, everybody, this is the first time they've played as a team like for actual game and not like a scrimmage or an exhibition. So the fact that this was how they played, for their first real game as a team with that many fans already. I mean, that's, that's pretty big time. One, one thing I kind of want to point out too, is DJ Burns only had to play 27 minutes uh, last year, you know, because of, of the situations he was having to get to 32, 33 minutes a game. Uh, if you can keep him around 27 to 29 minutes, I think you're going to keep him fresh and he'll be at his most effectiveness. Yeah. Keep, keep him out of foul trouble right. and keep him out of foul yeah, trouble. By yeah, the way, how three. many fouls? Yeah. Three. That's, I mean, that's improvement, right? So, yeah, we'll take it. Really so uh, I don't worry, preacher man, and uh, and infinite hay as well. We'll definitely get to wrestling here today because we ha- we had it on the dock to get to it last week. We just ran out of time. We have but... so much to go through. I know. <laughs> so let's, let's let's go ahead and jump on over to Tuffy's mailbag, y'all, and we'll jump into some football here, baby. Wait, why are we talking football? I thought we were a basketball school. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. well, you should have let me tell us the football and then be like, psych, we're going to keep <laughs> talking about basketball. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no. Uh, well, and as many people say, that's not what Steve Smith said. I know. Like, uh, whatever. Side anyway. note, real quick. I'm looking at some scores around the country uh, of the basketball real quick. James Madison on the road is up nine points on number four Michigan State. Wow. Yeah, about, about to go into halftime. UNC was tied with with uh, Bradford. Bradford, and I don't, hey, don't sleep I on they, those Highlanders. I think they were pulling away at that po- point soon, but like they won eighty six to seventy. UNC won eighty six yeah. to seventy. Yeah, I, I, um, I doubt they covered, right? Uh, I don't know. Eighteen what and a half was. point favorites, so and, almost uh, covered. Yeah. Did anybody else see the? I know it's not a top twenty five team. Did anybody check on Louisville? <laughs> Because they were losing. Oh, God. They won by one. <laughs> they, they won play? by oh, one point. UMBC, the team who was the number 16 UVA. seed who beat That's number right. one seed UVA. Mm-hmm. UMBC, right. Universal, University of Maryland, Maryland, Baltimore County. Baltimore County, there you go. Hey, that's a program-defining win for that Louisville basketball program. Got to give them props for that, all right? (laughs) So, All right, y'all, let's change gears, jump into some football here, y'all. So first question submitted in, this is more just kind of a a leading-in question, but 
What are your updated expectations, season expectations now we for football Clemson rest of the season? Miami. Oh, wait, that was already happened. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and, and I really, well, and, well, and I really do want to kind of say that 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 you know, uh, and just kind of FII, go ahead and give you guys a little bit of insight, being that you're here on the live show with us. Um, oh, and Nick points out that uh, Wake was losing to Elon, so not sure. Yes, yeah, I'm looking at the scores right now. Keep going, football, yeah. though. Keep going. Okay, keep football. Going. football. <laughs> uh, uh, but. Uh, you know, talking about, you know, program defining wins, uh, you know, and cause we had on, uh, uh, sorry, this week's episodes, we're interviewing four star class of 2025 tight end commit Gus Ritchie y'all. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And to make sure you do not miss on that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Y'all hit that notification bell, get to it. And, uh, that way you do not miss out on it. But anyway, so program defining wins. So, you know, when you think about Doran and, and, you know, what, what his program defining wins are, I think about, 2021 Clemson, you know, first one that comes to mind, uh, you know, UNC probably last year, that was a big win for sure. Uh, you know, really, you know, kind of state your claim. Maybe the last two are. No, but, no, yeah. No yeah. Yes. Well, well, and the reason why I kind of more say last year is because last year we weren't supposed to win the year before we were supposed yeah. to win, but just found a way to scratch it out. Yeah. But yeah, um, I, I still put that into it. But anyway, and then this year I would say Miami more because not necessarily because it was necessarily the best win, but just because you had two back-to-back huge challenges, games that we were not expected to win. I mean, it's, Clemson was a 9- to 10-point favorite. This game, Miami was a 6-point favorite. And both those games, you did what you needed to do. Like, it wasn't, you know, Miami definitely didn't play the best game, definitely shot themselves in the foot a good bit. But at the end of the day, I mean, you really stuck to your guns. You did what you needed to. And you came out with two huge wins over teams that, you know, I mean, or, or, or towards the top of the ACC, and now you're looking at the rest of the season going, man, like, you know, it, it went from two games ago after losing Duke being, are we going to a bowl game to now, yeah. are we, we going to win out? I, I don't even know. <laughs> so, so it was like we were talking differently about if we make it to a bowl game. It wasn't – it was going to be off the backs of Virginia Tech and Wake getting the six wins, not necessarily right. getting the six wins with Clemson and Miami. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you were hoping it was like, yeah, you got – the, it, the that wake and vt games but they're on the road and it's like well you got unc at home maybe but yeah just i mean being able to come out of the bye week and win those two straight I mean, it, it's that's just it, it's a great job by the staff and, and the players to all right to so this is what around. i need you to do michael i need you to get divorced this week and then go yeah. get married again next week <laughs> i know people <laughs> I love, your wife, if moon. your wife loves you she would do that for <laughs> right you. she honestly would <laughs> People were offering to uh, uh, pay to Dude. extend their honeymoon, and I, you there know, you almost took them off. Of <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, after the Duke game, you know, during that bye week, we were talking about what's the ceiling for the rest of the season. And if any of y'all had told me, oh, we're going to win out, I would say, All right, okay. I, I think that. you need a drug love test. Love your optimism, but whatever. But now, you know, two weeks later, after two unlikely wins where we were the underdog in both, I don't think that's ridiculous. I don't think it's ridiculous to say we are going to win out. We have two games in a row on the road, which is always tough. Um, Virginia Tech, I think, is becoming increasingly difficult to play on the road. It's a day game. Uh, And then, yeah, we play um, UNC Mm -hmm. at home, who are known to kind of crumble, fall apart playing us in recent years. Mm -hmm. I will say UNC is back in the top 25, which is ridiculous i mean they beat yeah yeah, they beat campbell i mean you could put my like old high schools football team out there and they beat campbell and it wasn't even that they started from the first quarter i thought i thought they were tied with carolina at in the second quarter weren't they tied with carolina in the second quarter yeah yeah it was one it was seven seven after inside carolina was having a meltdown i think yeah the reason they made it was because that one knucklehead from san jose bull crap in times put him at 15 so that gave him a lot of points. That's yeah. that's basically why. I mean, I would be curious to check where that guy graduated from, Greg. I mean, yeah. curious to see where that guy graduated from. Yeah, I was trying to do a little oppo research on him, and I, I kind of got distracted by work, unfortunately, so I didn't see mm. where where, where I, his lead. This is an was. interesting stat. We're two and eleven in Winston yeah. Salem since ninety five. Zero and three yep. in Lane since two thousand four. Let the record wow. show I've never been there, and I'm going this week, so I'm taking the win and win. Dude, it, so. I, I'm just yeah. out, I might go to the game this weekend too, Greg. Um, go to I've game. been I've been to every weight game in Winston since I was three, and 
Dang, that's they, rough. They have a they have a curse on us. It's it's obvious. I'm breaking I it. My whole what you're saying is, McKenzie, you need to stay home. Um, I'm going with Greg, so the double duo oh, will be, will be okay. fine. We'll be fine. I needed a third, so I, the Wake Forest would not let me buy just two tickets because there was an open seat. Yeah, that's so, so dumb. It's I the stupidest that. thing. So I, I, I think, was like, Ken's, let's go. <laughs> I think going in. Oh, I think going into a game as underdogs, not a lot of people like that, but I think for our team, like. We're better when we're doubted. Wait, honestly. state state's favored in this game for Wake yes. Forest. I didn't. Well, think this week, yeah. this week. Two and, but only by three, two and a half. So I mean, uh, I thought yeah, three I points. Saw that it was Still, uh, maybe, maybe, we haven't seen that in a while, man. I'll say well, shit. maybe Vegas will flip the line again and give hey, give Wake. We like. Oh wait, that's a, that's gotta be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Which I still don't hey. understand that one, but that's but, okay. That's I'm thinking, okay. I really think the curse will break this week. I'm going. It's gonna get broken. Yeah. Or Greg's uh, idiot out. One of the But the biggest thing, y'all, which I want to speak on while we're talking about football, because this is a guy that honestly I couldn't wait to bring up because this guy for weeks at a time has been getting the most, you know, just talked down to, like, hate on, boot off the field, you name it. But listen, y'all, we have to give this guy all the props in the absolute world because he came through absolute clutch for us. And if you do not know who I'm talking about right now, Brandon, then Brandon, I know Brandon, 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 Brandon. Yeah, no, Brandon Armstrong. Oh, no, man. Brandon. Brandon. No, no. Now it's Breeze Brennan. Yeah, no, that, that didn't work as good. But anyway, y'all, like, again, just I, I can't say enough oh, about this guy. Oh. I mean, first of all, like, on that on that first run play where he got where he like went into that linebacker and gave it everything he got and then he got up running off the field and was clapping like i i'm telling you dude like I, i'm sitting here saying give me 120 brandon armstrongs on the football team man like that dude he is athletic he is skilled he is a skilled player and you know what he is a team player and the definition of one at that and to go out eight rushes for 51 yards but again it really goes beyond the stats i mean that speed option play was gorgeously ran, ran his butt off, and was a huge piece to us winning this game. So, again, to go from a guy who was going into his make-or-break year and got sat down for a sophomore quarterback and then to come in for this game when, you know, most people, you know, maybe would say, no, like, you know, screw you guys. Like, you know, you guys just sat me during my senior year. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing this for you guys. And to fight his butt off like that and really help us win this game, I mean, I can't, I can't say enough about this guy. I really can't. I mean, he averaged over six yards a carry, and they were they were carries that you know they were. Nice. I mean, he had some like you said, he had some some tough hits. He got the horse collar against him. Uh, he, he's we're gonna pull a play where he's gonna line up and he's gonna throw it. and He's gonna get a touchdown. And oh, it's it's, it's coming. Totally setting up. It, it, you can getting, you can totally yeah. see it. <laughs> I just feel like it's either gonna come this week or it's gonna come against Carolina, and yeah. it was gonna be yeah. one of those two. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I you just can't say enough about the defense. It was it was an effort where Miami went into the red zone four times and only came away with a total of six points. Um, yeah, you know, they they, they got the, the the goal line stand, which um, didn't didn't necessarily turn the game around because they were still in the lead. But it just it cemented it broke. I felt like that, and then the subsequent drive of ninety was it ninety seven yards. It broke just, the spirit. It of broke Miami their backs. For sure. It yeah. broke their yeah. backs. Um, but yeah. anyway, so yeah, to get the Aiden White interception in the end zone and the shy battle and um, Caden Fordham. Four turnovers. Yeah, four Jeez. turnovers. Uh, we were plus two in the turnover department. Uh, you know, the stats don't bear it out. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's not about stats. It's about the final score. Um, it's two weeks in a row where you look at the stat sheets and you just kind of figure out, like, how does NC State win those games? And it's because they don't beat themselves. They do just enough get enough splash plays and their defense puts it together. Yep. Yeah. The, <laughs> the defense defense has cut out the the big play problem mm-hmm. that they had early. I don't I don't think Miami had a play over 15, maybe 20 yards. Yeah, I think Fletcher had run. a Fletcher yeah. had like a big run. Yeah, I think it was like a 16, 17 yard run, but that's Yeah, but it. that was it. As it wasn't in, you know, 80 yard touchdown we were giving up to Notre Dame. So, right. I and then combine that with, you know, our our offense just Hit, opportunistic a couple yeah hitting a couple big plays just like against clemson and that's all it takes especially when you know your defense is is not allowing big plays on the other side mm-hmm. 
Now, I am going to bring up this comment now that I've given Brennan a lot of love for sure. Uh, and I know this is going to be like, are you serious? Why are you, why are you bringing this up? But I think, it, I think it, this don't. is a... I think this is the point where this conversation is happening. Stand for something, and, man. <laughs> yeah, stand for something, bro. Now, um, I, I, now you've seen MJ in four games, and so now you're at that point of you can still retro him oh, if you God. want you to. Really are not happening right now. <laughs> well, well, the depth chart thinking, said that it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> I know, but you, I mean, you can't. I mean, you but, can't but you after can, but two you, wins, but, but but he hasn't played well. Know. It's, yeah. it's like that's not, he yeah, has not has Brennan well. played great too. I mean, I know we're hyping him up. Neither guy had really played great. I yeah. mean, they haven't lit it up. So well, but that's what I'm saying is that if you're if if I'm in stay, I'm, I'm also saying, well, like this is Brennan's last four games. It looks like the offense has started to kind of figure things out in terms of now yeah. you're kind of have built the offense around the players you have. And yeah. so it, it, again, I mean, like in Brendan's got confidence, yeah. the, the team's bought into him. So uh, I feel like there's yeah. to your point, Layton, I could, I could see that. I mean, like, I mean, I thought when Brennan came in, there was a little bit of some substance there in the offense. You're like, okay, mm-hmm. like there's something mm-hmm. there lurking under the water. And yeah, but you know, I mean, maybe, I mean, what I want to see is, the offense gelling and being consistent because there's no right mojo right now with this offense. I just want something. And if that means that MJ is the guy coming in and Brennan is, you know, in certain plays like the red zone or goal line or short yardage, like I'm okay. I'm okay with that. If it's something different, okay with that. Yeah. But all I, all I know is that by week came, we looked terrible. Go by week. We were out of a by week. We've won two games. So whatever they adjusted to, yeah, at least has gotten us wins. And if that means more Brennan, I'm totally cool with it. If that means more MJ, because honestly, I don't know that one gives us dramatically more than the other. I do know no, that yeah. Brennan gives us more rushing. I do know that. That's, but that's it's a big like, thing. Yes, it's a big thing. You're right. I just don't. I can't be like, yeah, go for one big time. Go for the other. It's but- just like. It's this is more this is more of the defense stepping up and the offense maintaining. Yes, and exactly. It, it hasn't been that the offense is expeditiously moved up. They're still doing what they're doing. Um, mm-hmm. Again, it's it's very opportunistic. They'll get one good drive. It feels like a game where they'll go out and drive the ball 80, 85, 90 yards. Um, and it's a lot of, OK, the defense setting up the offense or special teams setting up the offense. And they only got to go out and get 40 yards. And it feels like there's a lot more field goals being put up than touchdowns. So, you know, as long as the defense is keeping us in, I, I don't think you can revert back to, to to Brennan as much as the stats kind of bear out. It doesn't matter who you put back there. It's the mojo that's been going and that you've kind of found niche roles for people, right? You've moved Jordan Poole over from the defense to the offense. You've got, you know, a role for Brennan. You know, you've got um, – you know, some wide receivers kind of stepping up here and there. KC I, being a workhorse, like he should be. Yeah, KC, right. Yeah. You've, you've found like a, should you found him. You found what KC does best in this offense, and you just put him in different different positions in that, whether it's, mm-hmm. you know, being, you know, a little pitch pass, whether it's um, a – Which Tim route. Beck did not do with Thayer Thomas last year. So that's right. why everybody's saying, I wish I had Tim Beck back. You didn't see Tim Beck <laughs> no, work this around been very saying that. the last two weeks. Who's saying that? For real? Seriously? Oh. That was totally a conversation for sure. Yeah. Uh, back back I mean, when, like I, like Duke, I don't think it was that much better to be honest with you. I mean, there was offense. To be fair, there was there was more offense we're seeing with Tim Beck than there has been with the nine so far. I Go ahead, don't Kenton. think that's a nine. Go ahead. I feel like no, we no, also no. need to applaud MJ's toughness, though. I mean, oh. my man's gotten laid out oh, for sure five six mm-hmm. times, huge layouts, going to the tent three times out of those six. Yeah, I mean, those reps, those reps have to be not helping him. It's not just him. I mean, a lot of people are saying he's not how he was last year. I mean, he doesn't have the receiving core he had last year. Doesn't have the offensive line he had last year. His toughness is insane. I thought he was out after that hit at Miami he took. I really did. And for him to come back in the next, the next (laughs) offensive drive, it was big. We've we've cleaned up a lot of the nonsense, right? Like Michael said, we cleaned, we cleaned up the, the big explosion plays on defense for the most part, we've cleaned up a lot of the nonsense on offense. Um, though we did have pre two pre snap penalties this last game, but, um, we, we did really well against Clemson in that department. And so it's those little things that if you can clean up those little ankle biters, I'll call them, you give yeah. your chance, you give your team a better chance to succeed at the end of the game. And 
And here, mm-hmm. like, let's give credit to the to the offense. They put they put their foot down and stomped Miami when they needed to, and, and yes. put that game out of reach. One hundred percent, which is what we didn't do against Louisville with Brendan Armstrong at the helm. Yeah. True. Yeah, agreed. Lighton was saying that the offense is starting to figure it out. The keyword there is starting. Like Macon said, they're not gelling still. But I say if it's not broke, don't fix it. They were able to, you know, get ahead against Miami, give us that kind of reach to make the game out of reach, like Greg was saying. So I think there is room for Brennan out there in certain plays. Brennan gives yeah. us what we need. He has something. He brings something to the table that MJ does not. And neither of these guys are star stellar quarterbacks. We know that that's been our issue all season, but I think after two wins, you don't pull MJ. Even if MJ is not the one responsible directly for those wins. I think if it's not broke, don't fix it. You have to find room for Brennan where there is room and give credit where credit is due. He thrived last week. We needed him major respect, but I don't think it's, Oh my God, all of a sudden Brennan's, the answer again i think we stick with yeah. mj we put brennan in for certain plays let the offense kind of continue and hope that they gel or at least stay consistent enough to pull out those wins like they've done the last week. Mm, i see you Lindsay. dad go that was a heck, heck of a well, that was well said i love it go ahead greg yeah. I, I i think this offense has done really good when when you give mj a solid play like to get out get him out on, in space, you know, hmm. you, if you roll MJ, if you can get him some quick hitters, he, yeah. uh, because you know that this offensive line isn't going to give you, you know, three, four seconds on most times. But I will say that Miami was a very good defensive line, and we only gave up three sacks, and, and, and they had the second best uh, edge rusher in, in Bain, yeah, and he didn't yeah. get anything in that game. So, yeah. again, I think this, this yeah. team is doing just enough right to, to keep themselves in ball games we, we keep hitting on it they're not beating themselves like yes we had the two turnovers with mj throwing that pick by the way but here's the thing after each turnover we got it right back because our defense exactly. stood up and, and, and took it right back so those, those turnovers aren't hurting us as of right now well and to kind of break down to that one interception with mj threw like that's kind of one of those plays where i hope that you he can he can watch that film and gain a little bit of seniority expertise where you see when, when, if you watch that play back, Kevin Concepcion, when he, when he motioned out was one-on-one, no safety help all by himself in slot. So even though that play was maybe designed to go to Timmons, whoever was on the right side, I would hope that again, just this is more of a senior thought, but being, I got Casey, my best guy, one-on-one, nobody help. I'm looking at him all day long and I'm going to deliver the results. And if he did live with Casey, he was wide open. There was nobody between him and the end zone. It would have been a walk-in touchdown. But, again, that's a learning point for for future. But, again, yes, I, I'm sitting here saying I, I agree. Uh, so, again, well said, everybody. Love love to hear that. Hey, also, uh, let's not yeah. lose sight w- real quick. This is only MJ's, yeah. what, eighth game? Right. right? And he has a complete – he had a crap ton of more time last year to find a guy. So, I right. mean, he's still gelling with everybody else just like the entire offense is. So. Sure. Yeah. Yep. But again, got to give a shout out to Anai though too, y'all. Like I know that, yes, we only scored 20 points, but dude, the creativity, like it was exciting to watch. And he was getting, yeah, just like Greg it. said, he, well, he got his guys involved. Like, like I, I loved it. Great. It great with that, it's like, you, you have nothing to lose at this point from an offense standpoint. Just try mm-hmm. anything in my opinion. Yeah. yeah it, feels like it feels like they're throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. And then however that does, they just pull more plays out of that formation or, you know, add little wrinkles to it because it, it like, and here's the other thing I will say, and I kind of mentioned our discord. If you watch, this is something that we got to be careful about because there was times where Brandon Armstrong was wearing two gloves. And then there was times he was only wearing one glove. So, Oh, Greg. I, I heard that. 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 Same thing. Yeah. I put it in the discord today and I was like, cause I rewatched the game today. Cause that's something that when I'm sitting in the stands, I can't really say that they're, the little glove, you know, I can't pick up on those little things. That's interesting. But I was like, oh, we don't, we don't, we gotta just fix that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or we, or we need, we need Brennan to learn how to throw with the glove on. And, and yeah, and, exactly. You know, and then that would Kenny really Pickett throw him off. Style. Kenny Pickett mm-hmm. style. I like it. I like it. But uh, yeah, again, got Carson here mentioning about Miami has a stingy defense. Got to give a shout out to oh, offensive line as well. That I mean, even though you had Jacarius peak on the right side and he gave up a, a, a bad a bad sack that forced the fumble, just just completely just missed a missed assignment there. But at the end of the day, I mean, we only gave up five pressures to one of the best defensive <laughs> lines in the ACC, if not the country. You know, yeah. got to give a shout out to offensive line overall. Still did their job. 
it, and was effective. It, it, last, real quick, the last two defenses are the two best defenses in the ACC that we've played. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah. it should get easier in theory. And so maybe we'll start to see some of this stuff open up that we weren't quite hitting on in these last two games. And Wake uh, Forest's defense is not very good. Well, and Wake Forest's the offense of their team is what's supposed to be. Well, because Wake Forest's offensive line has given up 40 sacks so far this Peyton season. Peyton Wilson's going to have a blast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they're all. So, Red, well, Red Hibbler. Can I transition us real quick? Go for it. Go for it. The state have the ACC Defensive Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year on their team. You, you know what? Uh, I was just looking through the list. We'll okay, I was looking at individual stats. Right, you get yeah. you have a cute. But we're state, that, so we won't. That, 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 the, only, the only question I have is: is Rookie of the Year, Freshman of the Year, or yeah. is it a new? Okay, then then that then. Yeah, I think we. I that, think that we might. I see what you're saying. Is it like newcomer of the year or freshman? Is that yeah, what like it's right. like you know, I'm just making up somebody's yeah, thrash from Louisville. Like you see, or yeah. rookie yeah. of the year? No, it shouldn't be. Well, I I know that yeah. they they when they do their honors every week, they have a rookie category. So I would probably mm-hmm. think it was it is a rookie of the year or freshman of the year. But we will definitely talk about that. Exact, yeah, let's do that uh, conversation that's right an here. Thought. And it's week of the week, absolutely. But real, real quick, uh, I know uh, um, uh, Infinite Hate and uh, Preacher Man have been dying, but uh, to talk for us to talk about this, so let's talk about it here, real, real quick. NC State wrestling, y'all, uh, coming off a forty Thanks. to three dominant win over App State, uh, which again, huge shout out to the Wolfpack fans. Don't forget Presbyterian; for- they beat them forty-eight to nothing. Yeah, yeah, it counts. Yeah. You got it, it counts, counts. It counts. Yeah, it counts. It counts. Uh, smoke uh, the Presbyterians. <laughs> yeah, smoke the Presbyterians. Yeah, no. Um, but again, huge shout out to the Wolfpack fans that made the trip all the way out to Boone. There was a ton of red in, yep. in, in, in that in that arena. It was awesome to see. But uh, I'm sitting here saying, y'all, like, there's no real weakness that really stands out to me on this on this lo- NC State wrestling lineup. Uh, I mean, you're bringing everybody back. The only guy that you're not bringing back bringing back quote unquote is Isaac Trumbull and he's doing his Olympic record. Camacho, year. right? Because he's yeah. injured. No, he's back. He's, is he's, he back? Is he, did he get injured again? No, no, no. I thought I thought there was someone out for for medical. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. That was Camacho last year was out. Uh uh was he okay. injured he got, he got knocked out for the season. That's right. He did wrestle got, in the wrestle offs of the night. You're right. You're right. Correct. So but I mean that's the thing is and, and but then you know with losing Trumbull you're bringing in Dylan Fishback who's gotten who's got nothing but pins so far this this season. So I mean he's been phenomenal to say the least. So I mean I, I'm sitting here saying I mean preseason ranked number three in the country. I, I mean I, I don't see any reason why this shouldn't be another six straight ACC title for for uh for Pi Popolizio. And yeah. I really, really am praying that we can finally get two national you know two two national contenders at least if not two national champions in the same year and i think between ed scott camacho uh trent heidley owen trefon you got a lot of guys that could compete uh for at least an all-american status if not a national championship so uh yeah. excited to see what this team could do yeah i mean obviously our biggest competitor is going to be virginia tech i think they were right there in the acc at, yeah in the acc yeah uh so that's really <laughs> and, and you got pitt you know, that's got some decent wrestlers. And then that other school was allegedly a top 25, but they got smoke checked by Oregon state. Yeah, they did. Oh man, so. dude. I'm when, when they come, when they come to rails Coliseum, y'all, I kept plenty of receipts y'all. And we are letting that <laughs> new coach have it, man. I don't even know his name. I, it doesn't even, it, he doesn't even matter. Want to have his name right <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to say this disparagingly. So it's going to come off wrong, but I just say we put all the hot chicks and from NC state right in the front row and say, bro, we got hot chicks too at NC state. Um, <laughs> Wait, just because what? did he say comment. something about that? Yeah. Yes. He said, okay. People yeah. at Carolina went crazy. Like, want he... New UNC coach. Wrestling yeah, so the yeah. new UNC coach is like, why wouldn't guys want to wrestle at UNC? The campus is 60% women and 95% of them are sexy. This is like a grown man. Yeah. And he was like saying this. And oh, it was, no. uh, yeah, it has not gone over too well. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, rough. Yeah. So, hey, I could have happened to a better group of uh, fans <laughs> over there at UNC too, man. I, I, oh, it's, no. just, it's just, a, it's amazing how much their coaches put their foots in their mouths. Like, do we not do it, this training? Yeah. Like, they do. do it's not, like a different coach training? every year. That oh, yeah. Or, <laughs> or this is, and then Greg is just going to sound rude. Too. Maybe <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Let's go with your idea. All right. All right. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> All right. 
Text then we'll, me. Then we'll, <laughs> then we'll leave it at that. Um, but uh, if, if if and I hate pointing out a, a great point, talking about how Pop Pop Alicia really kind of scheduled the entire offseason around keeping the guys more fresh, not doing a lot of really hardcore workouts, like really just keeping them as fresh as possible. So that way, once they get to nationals in March, uh, they can be as fresh as they can be. Uh, Cause I think that, I think that from Absolutely all the conversations point. I've had with him, that's one of the biggest things that he has said is that just, you can kind of feel that as they got to nationals, that there was a lot of worn out, a lot of war. Yeah. A lot of war, war out just after a long <laughs> grueling uh, season. So, um, Anyway, though, and then, yeah, remember y'all that Reynolds is a small gem. Oh Thank gosh. you, Preacher Man. Uh, but anyway, Macon, let, let's get back to, to your conversation point you brought up <laughs> earlier. Let, let's get over to it before you say whatever you were borderline going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All righty. So this, kind of, this tweet right here, uh, uh, you know, kind of I think – summarizes what you were talking about making so it was a tweet by airwolf uh, uh talking about prior eight nc state ac player of the year oh, winners yeah, and uh brings up defensive player of the year by lavar fisher in 2000 bradley chubb in 2017 and then rookie of the year which there's a list of them but the most recent one being russell wilson 2008 in a while and yeah. uh talking about uh, why did he say well i think he meant to say peyton wilson it had to have been sorry i didn't even i didn't even put two and two together until well, it says yeah, will no, will oh, well, will, 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 we have a will, commit will, named will wilson, wilson so i was yeah. like, like that's right that's, oh, that's why will, will, will will wilson oh will. <laughs> start at, oh my start God. the inflections you have to use your voice to understand that and communicate it's like will yeah. wilson <laughs> dang it did someone change the words will on Ron, on Ron's teleprompter next? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Will sitting here. Wilson be next. That's Will a, that's an Peyton Wilson, an <laughs> Kevin Concepcion right be next. <laughs> um, and I'm sitting here saying, I mean, I, I, we were talking about it last week about you know where does Peyton Wilson re- rank top five? And I'm telling y'all right now, man, there's not five linebackers I'm taking over Peyton Wilson if I'm yeah. creating a team, man. There's not like this dude. Stuff. Oh my god, he is, he's oh just phenomenal. God. Every single time I see him, I'm sitting here like, oh. It's great so, to watch y'all. Well, I'll go back to what we said last week. Remember the little stat I said? He's averaging like 14-something tackles a game. Yeah. If he maintains that average, he will now he got 16 be last on week. track. I mean, he'll be on – he'll, he'll be he'll be fourth all-time NC State again behind some like elite linebacker players. Uh, he's first – well, he's the second most tackles out of a Power 5 linebacker in the country right now behind Iowa's. Um, linebacker. That was as of last week. I don't know where they are this week. I mean, that's if all I'll you, say there. If you watch the the huddle afterwards, after the game on Saturday, just listening to him talk, like he's become so well spoken. He's he's matured so much. Just listening to him say that they asked him how many tackles he had or like how good he played, and he said, "Well, I'm not really focused on that. I could have gotten a pick six. You all saw and all this stuff. So it's like he's he focused really on have. just." He's just make it like make sure that he knows that there's room for improvement in every game. And that's I mean, that's the type of player you want on your team all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so, definitely well, no doubt. Hey, Pey- Peyton Wilson, I think, is up for I mean, I think 100 percent I, I, def- defensive player of the year. But I think he's up for player of the year. But I wouldn't be surprised if Drake May is going to somehow squeak that or, or 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 Jordan Travis. I think actually Jordan Travis is, is going to win it. Hey, real quick, I, I making think. it to uh, he, Jay Higgins. Uh, he's eight behind the that that tackle number. Um, so wait, you're saying Jay Higgins yeah. is one, and then Peyton Wilson is Peyton Wilson's eight behind him? Yes, correct. Eight, eight so, tackles, so one thirteen right. to one hundred five. So he um, could, in theory, he's close enough where he plays, keeps playing the way he is. Maybe Jay Higgins slips up or whatever. He could potentially pass him. Yeah, he's not uh, so far off. So I'm getting that. No, and Peyton's only three off of his career high, and we still have three more games to go. Yeah, just kind of put yeah. That in as well. I, I don't know statistically. I'm looking just defensively. There's a lot of. I feel like it may be actually harder. Which is going to be more? The answer to the question: What do you think will be more difficult to win? What do you think more harder for Peyton to win defensive player of the year or Conception to win rookie? Because I don't see any rookie doing what Conception's doing right now. That's why I'm like. Mm-mm. Is he the best rookie because there's not a whole lot of other options? Or well, is- and that's what and that's what I'm saying is like I'm saying, uh, yeah, I'm saying I agree with you, rookie of the year. Yeah, I mean Conception, like what he's done from Ooh, game nobody's one, doing what Conception's doing right now, right? Well, it, well and the only guy rookie. I can really think of is is 
this running back with with Miami uh, because over the Fletcher. last couple of games he's yeah Fletcher Mark Fletcher, yeah Fletcher he's had Mark over a hundred rushing yards. Is he a true freshman? Yes, he is. Yeah, hmm. so he's he's had over a hundred rushing yards and back to back games. Okay, okay, um, that's your competition. Yeah. But once again, Concepcion has been doing this from game from day one. You know, Fletcher didn't come in until later in the season. So. Um, but I also say as well, I mean, like Peyton Wilson, I'm sitting here saying, listen, Peyton Wilson doesn't get AC defensive player of the year. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but, uh, I, I don't know. But, uh, to me, they're both in the driver's seat. Let's put it that way. I opinion. agree. They're both, you know, putting in this consistent work game after game, giving us consistent results. We praise them week after week, but unfortunately I think a lot of these results come down to how our season ends. You know, if we go if we win out the rest of the season, I think that's way better for their odds. And if we go one and two or even two and one or God forbid lose out, um, I think a lot of it, I know, knock on wood, sorry, Mm-mm. but I think a lot of it revolves around team success as well. So even though we can say that Peyton Wilson and Kevin Concepcion are doing what they need to do and putting in that work for their team and nobody's doing it like them, I think – the voters will see, well, also, how did this team do overall and how did they impact their team? So I think how our season ends could have a huge effect on their consideration for these awards. Just real quick, going back to Peyton, because he was, um, I don't know if, if we have the tweet of the week that he was named as a semifinals for the Buckus Award. But um, just kind of looking, I just kind of was going back and forth with Jay Higgins of Iowa and, uh, and uh, Peyton. Uh, Peyton has three more sacks than Higgins. He has three more passes defended, one extra interception, and there's only, like I said, eight tackles separating. Uh, they both basically have the same number of solos. It's the assisted tackles. That's really the only difference in their number. So, like, if you're looking on the surface, I, I think Peyton Wilson has to be in the lead or right there for the consideration of that award. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, had this he, here he for, almost right, had right. another pick six to – Two. Yeah. Dude, uh, he should have. Oh my uh, god, man. Yeah. Dude. Uh, yeah, nah. I'm gonna add this in as a tidbit when in terms of rookie of the year. So I'm looking at who the comp would be. They've got guys like week one, it was uh Ike Daniels, Syracuse running back. You've got a defensive end from Pitt. I think uh, Casey's Anthony. the only one that's done it twice, though, right? Doesn't He's Casey done it, won it twice? Three times. Three, three times. times. All right, I missed one. He is the I mean, only player to have won it more guy. than once, I think. Yeah, so he's, he's definitely a guy, right? I, I got to check on Fletcher. I'm going through each week, but the rookie quarterback from UVA, Calandria, Clemson's yeah. got a DB, nice. Tyler Brown. But yeah, he won it week four, week six, and week nine. His conception won it. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he's definitely got to be in the driver's seat too. So, um, yeah. So, so again, he, love what I'm seeing from them. But uh, I got to switch over to to my guy who just achieved a huge accomplishment and became the winningest oh. football coach in NC State football history, baby. Salty Dave Doran, Coach Doran, huge shout out to my guy. 78 <laughs> wins, passing the all-time great Earl Edwards. Uh, you know, could not be more excited for him. I loved his swagger after the game, you know, with that cigar, man. That was that was awesome to see. I love it. Um, and I got to give a shout out to this tweet uh, from Josh Goodson the previous week where it mentioned about how Dave Doran, has only never beaten one ACC team, and that was Miami. And uh, now that is beaten along with the all-time win, win streaks. That's what I'm saying, too. Like, in terms of what was accomplished during this Miami game for the season, for uh, for, this, for the sake of the offense, That's for for Doran, like, like there was so much that was accomplished in this Miami game. And Doran being the all-time uh, win, winning as coach – and also to now beating Miami, and so now he's has a win against every single ACC, ACC team, is phenomenal. We yeah. touched on this um, when we did our Miami preview, talking about that it would make him the win- winningest coach, and that it would mean that he beat every ACC team. We said we knew it didn't work like this, but it just felt like time. Like yes. I know it doesn't technically work like that, but sometimes it just lines up like that. So it was super satisfying to see it actually work out that way. Uh, so yeah. Major shout yeah. out to Doran. I thought Love it was seeing him somewhat, smoke his cigar, celebrate. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit. Long else, I thought it was a little poetic, right? Like he got his yeah. career, he got his record win against a team he had not beaten yet, and uh, and, and at home too. Yeah, and did it. You know, 
he's a defensive coach. Really, in my mind, the game was won defensively. Uh, it was. Just, I thought it was kind of poetic for him, so to speak. So, and totally. uh, so I think I forget who I saw it from. Maybe it was on one of the message boards, but somebody said the confidence that Doran had to. He talked about flying in all his friends from his playing <laughs> days and some old teammates to fly him in for the game. He knew he was winning this one. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I, I just, I think to your point, Macon, it, 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 this game exemplified or just personified everything that, that Dave Doran does at NC State. Like that was a Dave Doran game uh, yeah. where you, you know, the, the calling card of this team out of the last probably four, four or five years. And, and, and if you look at the players that we've had, it seems like the most shine on has been on that defensive side of the ball. Um, that's where we've had most of our NFL, you know, draftees from. Uh, it it was the game where we're just going to go out and knock you in the mouth. And we're just mm-hmm. going to, you know, like the Kendrick Raphael run, you know, where the guy tried to hit him high and just, oh, he just that, passed off that, of him. Not even that him, that block from yeah, Trent. The block, Trent was, Trent oh was good. Gosh. Yeah, the way, the way Trent that sealed man. that the edge, that was beautiful. That was insane. Uh, yeah, the whole thing was just that it was an NC State game, night game, where the crowd was just rowdy. Um, it, it was the right setting for for Dave Dorn getting his career seventy eighth win at NC State. But the but the the summary for me, which I would say is his quote after the game during the post game press conference or, or during the during the right after game on field uh, interview, where the the commentary lady was like, uh, uh, "Yeah, I know it wasn't the prettiest win, but you got what you got it done." And he was like. I thought it was a very was pretty one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was beautiful. And I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah we like yeah. to muck it up. I mean, we're not going to, yeah. you know, we're, you know, Dave Dorn has never been about style points. It's just go out and we're going to bust you in the mouth. And whoever's left standing in the game will be crowned vic- 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 victoriously. And, yeah. and Joe Giglio put out a tweet, one of his yellow pad t- tweets last night. Yep. There you go. That was the one I was going to. He's got it, man. I had it ready. Uh, yeah, no, it real is. quick, Michael, and then I'll let you, I'll kind of summarize it and I'll let you kind of yeah. make a comment on it. So basically, Joe Giglio said, the best way to avoid losing close games, don't play them. And uh, hashtag FSU. And, uh, you know, it has basically for uh, 2023, 2022, 2021, each team in the AC's records when it's a one score game. And uh, state actually. Pretty good. You could say is 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 actually first uh, in the best ACC. Record, yeah. at, has the best record, ten and five in one score games over the last three three years, uh, and then second place, quote unquote, Clemson at ten and six. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just like it, it. It's you know going down this list. I think it seems like maybe you know, Doran leaning on the defense gets us in a lot of games that maybe shouldn't be one score games. But when you look at this list, I mean, 15 games over the last three years is, is just kind of slightly above average. I think the average is 13, um, 13, but, again? you know, 13 games over the last three years, one score games wow. that mm-hmm. they've played in. Mm-hmm. And so, and his, you know, the record kind of speaks for itself. Like he, he's as, feels good playing in one score games. He likes to keep it, keep it close and lean on his defense. And, and the record reflects that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was kind of one of the things that they were talking about on, on the game on Saturday. It's like, you know, why did Miami just kick the field goal, take the points and then, um, you, you know, play, play the, play the odds, play the long game. Cause at that point there was still like, I think it was like seven or eight minutes left in the game. And yeah. So, you know, you get it down to a, to a one point game. Cause that makes it 10, nine, I believe at that 10, point. Nine, yeah. Yeah. And, so I, I, you know, I think if there's if it was reversed, I think you would have seen State take the field goal, and, and um, that's how we would have probably ended up playing it. Um, again, you know, just just the way Dave Doran plays the game, he plays those one score games. He's going to take the points when he can, and and yeah. not always gamble, right? And it drives us fans bonkers. Sometimes. He plays very conservative, <laughs> but but the record shows that that's the way you should play, right? If we're ten and five in those games. You know the analytics yeah. don't normally lie. Mm. And once yeah. again, I have I have to shout out to once again and and Lindsay. I'm sorry. I'll let I'll bring you back to this. Uh, uh, that people keep on you know bringing up the point saying NC State's football program is mediocre. And I'm I'm I I I literally after the game could not stop thinking about that quote being like, 
you don't understand. Like, like honestly, like, like if I were to give you the choice in terms of overall program, in terms of fan support, in terms of money, in terms of facilities, in terms of on field performance, whatever that may be, there's not one single program in the state of North Carolina I'd rather be than NC State right Dude. now. Seriously, overall, like fan support, money, facilities, on field performance, you name it. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't want it because again, UNC, I say. No fan support with you know App State. I would say I thought you know, they had a crazy atmosphere. Out. What do you? I mean? know crazy atmosphere. I mean, look at ECU. <laughs> ECU is one and eight right now, y'all. Like, dude, ECU eight. fans are losing their crap. Relax, my mom's so. here. You might say something. How is our Boneyard <laughs> podcast buddy doing? I know, oh, right? Because right. now, now Mike Houston has too big of a contract that he that they can't get out. So, so I mean, mm. I'm sitting here saying, like, again, I mean, Duke, the the, the Duke game this past week was. Was terrible, and again, we we even took over their their own stadium, and they're going to lose their head coach. And Elko's not sticking around. By so. the way, they only have forty thousand seats in that place. It isn't like it's hard to fill it up. Right, exactly. So, so again, y'all, like, like, and another thing. I'm just so let's <laughs> let's stop disrespecting this daggone football program Doran's built, man. Like, it is phenomenal. That environment well, was phenomenal. Like, to your point, on, Layton, To your point, I think that's just fans living in their mindset. Being fans. And, yeah. and, and and to also be fair, like we haven't. I think I think if if fans saw the ten win season, sure, there'd yeah. be a good number of fans who would Absolutely. break away from that mold, right? Because yeah. then you kind of, the, to me, there's layers to this onion, so to speak, and like we've kind of chipping away um, at this. And I think the next the next thing is the ten win season or or getting yeah. to the AC. Technically, we game. did get that ten win season. Okay, the holiday bowl. Get, yeah, I get you. <laughs> I get you. But I mean, like, I so that way, there's no doubt people want to see the with the on the scoreboard the tenth win. I get you. Like, I think, I think just yeah. fans have in their mind that like, oh, like they they we have fans that are still ten years in the past, right? Yeah. Sure. So yeah. Hey, real, Lindsay, real quick, I want Lindsay. Hold on, I just want to drop one yeah, quick no. stat. We are like the second lowest spending university on our football program. Yeah, over like the last too. like 10, 10 plus years during Dorn's yeah. I know you're looking for at me like second I'm lowest was that spending crazy? like we're spending out money the, on the program out of the public the out public ACC school versus North Carolina uh, versus AC school oh, AC yeah okay, I got you got you now yeah okay. so imagine if we were spending kind of on the same numbers that we were spending we would probably get even better results so go ahead Lindsay take it over it's kind of irrelevant now from what we were talking about, but talking about those one score games, 10 and five overall, but also three and one this season. Like we beat Virginia, Marshall, and Clemson yep. all in one score games, losing only to Louisville. So we like to battle, you know, we like those close games. Greg said we like kicking your teeth and seeing who ends up victorious, but it works for us. So yeah, it's stressful to be in those bleachers and think, oh my gosh, we're mediocre or whatever. This sucks. Like we're going to lose again. But playing these close games tends to work for us. So I, yeah, got to get out of that point. I'm out of that point. It's a night. It's NC State's identity, right? We have an identity. We don't like to do it. It easy. is hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we, we've never attacks, really kicked, right? I'm kidding. We never really killed an ACC opponent. If you think but, about no, it, well, <laughs> honestly, I mean, yeah, not recently, not this year, not recently, sure. but it's yeah. like, but it's like, State's identity is hard, tough defense, right? We're gonna like beat your face in with defense, and you're gonna like. I never so you made the point, McKenzie, about Peyton Wilson's post game interview, and they asked him. Or I think it was Mark Rick asked him. Mark Rick's always got some kind of random, awkward question. You never know what he's going to ask, and he's like, "Did you know?" Like, oh, you're you, you, you going to say like him? Okay, I'm not going to make fun of him. He's not. <laughs> can't even move. Yeah, but he uh, he basically is like, "Yeah, like, what's your favorite kind of play? Do you want to like get a sack? Oh, Do you yeah. want to like?" So he goes. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm a country boy, but I just want to meet a guy in the A gap and see where he's from, get to know him, and see what he's all about. He said, "I want to learn." He said, "I want to learn." I want to meet him, like, meet him up in the A gap and see what he's all about. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. That's a pretty sweet answer. So yeah, that's a great answer. Like, that is that an embodiment of state's, state's mindset. Right? I just want to, I want to beat you up, man. I want to kind of like go yeah. mono y mono and see what you're all about. And I like that's that's pretty great. I mean, then that's. I also think that's it. That stems directly down from Dave Doran and Tony Gibson because Tony Gibson is from the yeah. same cut of cloth as Dave Doran, right? So mm-hmm. they're both, you know, guys with some swagger about them, honestly. So 
Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, Carson pointing out the last time we really beat an ACC team by a lot yeah. was 2021 against Syracuse. Um, we're being it'll come. Hammered. It's just give it time. It's just not. I, I don't want to wait either. I don't want to wait either. But sure. like, I want to be destroying teams. I'll be the next. I want to win a national championship. Right. Keeping so. <laughs> keeping in mind once again the preseason win total per Vegas was six and a half. A little juice to the over. And yeah. I mean, so juice. so so saying once again per Vegas, if you get eight wins, which is a very realistic possibility, very realistic. That is a great season per Vegas. If you get nine yeah. wins, that is a phenomenal season for yeah. Vegas. Well, I feel like it's just one win at a time. This the teams look at that, but like I feel like even as fans, guys, like we, we we have a people think we got a terrible team, and like we we like it's like the defense gets an A, the offense gets an F. I'm, I'm exaggerating. By it, the way, but this is a rebuilding year, right? Yeah, yeah it, but it's like, yeah. but it's like if we can do that, like I was thinking about this schedule coming up. If we, Period. if you had to pick. You mean like if like state's gonna win games? I feel like they win games that you just don't you can't predict it's gonna happen. Like I did not think yeah. it'd be Clemson and Miami, right? Uh Miami's averaging 35 points a game. We held them to six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Um yeah. so like in theory, do we go out and lay a goose egg against Wake Forest? Well, I, mean, well, so I, I was getting ready to ask that same no. question. Do we have that I game in us? So. Because like We've done. Are we playing defensive right now? I don't think so. If we play like we did on Saturday, Wake won't score a point. Yeah. <laughs> Our defense yeah. does. <laughs> Honestly. It's very realistic. And the offense didn't do hardly anything. Like someone said at I think, it was, I think it was halfway through halfway well, through the fourth quarter. Nice. Okay, halfway through the fourth quarter, State had only put up five yards of yeah, offense. It was it was before that the 97 five yard drive. Five yards yeah. of offense. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, if they I mean, can just muster offense with the way the defense is playing right now, State is a tough team to beat if they can just figure out the offense. And they, it's like we, we baby had, step pulling teeth yeah. to get there, but it's happening. <laughs> we I had 231 maybe. yards offense, and 97 was on one drive. Yeah, what was, what was I mean, I know, I know MJ's uh, like your boy, McKenzie, but like, what was his stats? Like, he did not have good stats. No, he oh, didn't. Yeah, and, we, we already said that. Yeah, and yeah, my yeah. point would be like, but, like yeah. but we won. My whole point is like, yeah. yeah. We're given that uh, defense is giving the offense the time to figure things out. Like to McKenzie's point, like he said, MJ didn't really have blockers and all that kind of stuff. The offensive line, I think, is just kind of what they are. But they're yeah, they're, they're giving them time they're to figure doing out what enough. They do. Yeah, yeah. Well, well like I lot- said, we had the two we had the two turnovers, but we got the ball right back from our defense. Got right. the ball right back. So yeah. and we're also the seeing- defense is bailing us out. And but here's the last thing: how much more can we rely on that though? Like at some point, the offense has to do their part. <laughs> Well, to your point, we're not very good offenses like except maybe Carolina. They'll I mean like Virginia yeah, Tech, right. so they're great. And I mean Virginia Tech put up like Virginia Tech put up three points, sacks. three points against was it Louisville? Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. Louisville's a good team, but they put up three points. Like we did that against Duke, who was also a good defense. Yeah. I don't know if they're better offense than we are. I'm, it's hard to imagine they're worse. What, what, but... what worries me is the crowd noise at Virginia Tech again, you know, oh, 100%. that's, that's gonna be tough. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about Wake if they're gonna if they're fair weather fans for football and again. No, they're fans. Wake Forest fans. Well, and, and Can we get that as a clip, Lindsay? Later, just because you're saying no, their fans suck, and there's that yeah. no context. <laughs> just that, just the three seconds. Just just that. Social. Like I don't think I've ever seen Wake Forest student section full, and I'm pretty. No. It's no. just like every because I've been to Wake, like I said, since I was five. It's like every game or every year, there's more. It's just like it was with Duke this year. There's more red in the stands yeah. than there is Wake. So, I mean, it's going to definitely like feel like home. And I feel like you, like, don't see Wake Forest fans out in the wild. Like, no hate to Wake Forest the fans wild. out there. Wild. In the wild. You know, like, <laughs> hey, Coach, Coach Coop said Wake that. Forest fan, go Pokemon. It's fast. Where are you, Wake? Hey, Where hey, are Coach, you? Co- Coach Coop said Coach that. Coach Coop said that about State fans. Level 26 like, Wake Forest fan. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, like, like when you're I live in the triangle area, I'm walking around, I see people in state yeah. stuff, UNC, Duke, whatever. Like Forest fans Ain't nobody in Wake Forest fan. stuff. Unless no. Wake Forest fans come out, I've learned if they beat the triangle teams. That's when well, they come out in full yeah. force yeah. and they're like, oh my god, we're and I'm like, you're where they're not so even the step hey, Where I live, you're there like, are Wake Forest fans. I live Okay, really sorry, Wake Forest fans. Though. I guess yeah. I, I live like a small hours. nucleus around the, the triad area. Like <laughs> it, it really I make is, our neighbor yeah. as a Wake Forest fan. I mean they're I'm um, looking it up because I, I I didn't know the size of their stadium. It's thirty one thousand. Like yeah. wow. 
It's, Tiny. it's but I mean, I know it's like, I think they're the smallest or second smallest uh, student population. I think I think yeah. only Duke yeah. is smaller than them. I it think is. their yep. whole their whole student body could fit in their student section. So that's Honestly. why it's never oh, that's definitely. why it's never full because not you would have to get every single like student there. <laughs> yeah, less than nine thousand students are enrolled at um Wake Forest. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the undergrad population is under fifty five hundred. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of grad. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, y'all. So I definitely think there's gonna be a lot, a lot of red there. There's not gonna be a ton of Wake Forest fans coming out for a four and five Wake Forest team um, after NC State team after now coming with an NC State team that just beat Clemson and Miami. So I'm not saying that that we're going to do it, but I'm just saying from a, a Wake Forest fans perspective, I don't expect a lot. But I, I I know this is gonna sound really stupid. Real quick, we this team has to play in front. If we get behind, yeah. uh, especially against the okay. Wake Forest team who will slow mesh the crap out of us. <laughs> um, they may not throw a pass if they get up by a touchdown or two. And this is the game that we always seem to beat ourselves. I mean, a couple years ago with the mm-hmm. Mecca, a couple yeah. years ago with stepping out of bounds in the last drive. It's just like – we... Or the onside kick that didn't go 10 yards that went 10 yards. Exactly. It's like you cannot risk any small thing. Like, one, we can't let the refs decide if we get something or not. Yeah. This is our house of horrors. It's yeah. you just cannot beat yourself at this this week, and that's a huge thing that I feel like we have to understand going into the game. Last quick topic, y'all. I know that we're running over, but again, this is obviously we said we had a lot to get to, but mm-hmm. I, I I can't get off without bringing up this one quote unquote tweet of the week, which is more of a shame tweet of the week, and that is this tweet here talking about our guy uh, Alec Mack, oh, uh, uh, the transfer from ECU to NC State. And this was talked about a lot, you know, talked about by, you know, Corey Smith and, you know, a bunch of people along his state. But again, just reminded once again, an infield transfer from ECU uh, yeah. that, that was a multi multi year. Um, and uh, basically during the ECU football game versus Tulane this past weekend, they recognized uh, the ECU baseball team, I'm assuming for a conference championship. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Alec. No, AAC. Didn't, go ahead. No, I think. Well, I don't know if it was last year because Tulane, remember Tulane, who won like 11 games all season last they, year? They, that might have been their regular season. season. Yeah, they might they have probably been regular, regular season. season. Yeah, 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 probably. Yeah, but but so basically they had the whole baseball team out there on, on the goal line getting recognized, and Alec, there's a picture of this, basically of him sitting, standing on, on in standing in the stands, standing on the front row of the stands, uh, wearing, you know, holding his championship ring up in the air. And I brought this tweet up right beside it, talking about when when Alec uh, announced his commitment, and Cliff Godwin put out a tweet saying, "No one person will ever be bigger than our program, Go Pirates." And and I I came out saying this was a despicable tweet. This is shameful, you know, and all that, and I mean, rightfully so, especially now. And we'll talk about that. But everybody said, "Well, th- how do you know it's about Alec?" They didn't say like Godwin mm-hmm. didn't say his name, and I went out and said, "Well, if it." Walks like a duck and it walks like a duck. It's probably is a duck. I mean, this guy said it the day that Alec committed to NC exactly. State. Uh, not even an hour later, I don't not think. Not even an hour later, <laughs> exactly. And the body and now, was still warm. Right? Warm. You could have easily waited till the next day. <laughs> and again, this just goes even further saying I have no respect for Godwin, man. Like the fact no, that you, this you, whole you thing, put this guy on the sideline, that is shameful, man. Yeah, this whole thing has me personally mad. Like, I'm Alec myself. I mean, he he played four years at ECU, got his degree there, and was the only player to start in all of their 66 games last season. Transferred Hmm. here for grad school and to finish out his eligibility. And, yeah, the team took the field against Tulane Saturday to celebrate. He wasn't invited on the field. Name Hmm. not even mentioned. Hmm. Uh, I think it's just disrespectful to what he put into this program, a guy you trusted to start in every game, a guy who played for four years who has a degree from the school. Transferring isn't personal, always. Transferring can be about academics, can be about being closer to family, can be about a million different things. And this level of, like, petty and disrespect is just a bad look. And, I mean, yeah. the fan – and what even makes me more mad is the fans aren't really speaking out about it. Like, they're not calling their coach out for it. Like, it's not being – talked about enough unless it's wonder, from state fans like to hold your well, coach accountable like I anybody. they're mad about it. i wonder if they're just genuinely mad yeah i think a lot of ecu fans saying. probably feel the same way but that, yeah. that's just i'm not saying it's wrong i'm not saying it's right or wrong i'm just saying like that's probably why like i don't I, i'm with you guys i think he's a team player 
you know, you should rec- he should be recognized the team. I wonder though if would state do the same thing. I would hope not. I'll, but they're, they're, they're about as sour God, no. as a two week overripe grapefruit. Please, but God, let's say no. let's say like you know, um, I'm trying to think a player in recent memory who let's say Tommy uh, White, Andrew Kisner, what or and Tommy White, yeah, Tommy White makes a good example. Like he goes off. And he, you know, he comes back and he, well, I'm sure they had a team that actually really did something really big. Um, well, I don't know. Tell me why. I guess if he, if say, say he won a championship, Tom White transfers to LSU and they want to honor that team. Like, do we? I like or, you have to bring Tommy White back. <laughs> whatever. I, I mean, it could be a coach. A coach could well, leave. Exactly. A coach could leave a team and go to a no school. And then you want to honor a, a team that was really special and you bring the coach back. Like, he's part of exactly. that Exactly. And because, again, I mean, you would, I, like, I, they I would bring back, they would bring back Coach Ruffin. Honestly, like if yeah. it's something like that, they would bring they him back to honor it. It's- well, I think too, it's all about timing, right? Like if this was a team that they honored, say five years later, it probably wouldn't be yeah. a big deal. But but the wound is still kind of fresh, right? Like like to your point, they would bring Ruffin McNeil back now, but seven years ago, if they had won a championship, they probably no, don't. Not. It's it's all about timing. It's a bad look, regardless of it. It's a terrible. But look. It it is what it is, and I would just hope that we our program or our programs would rise above something like this. I'm not I, sure they would, but I would hope that they would. I really do. I I see no excuse for this whatsoever, especially I mean I mean for any reason, but especially because this guy had a, a perfectly understandable reason. At the end of the day, ECU doesn't have the graduate program. We do. Like it 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 wasn't anything personal beyond that. Like it's just. Again, at it, least it on the just, surface, it seems like that. But I mean, well, and and again, but also too, he wasn't even starting. Like he was, I mean, like in terms of in terms of, he wasn't a a, a focal point of the team. Let's put it that way. Like, like he wasn't he wasn't the guy that was relied upon throughout the, the entire ECU team. And he probably wasn't going to be this year. But if he comes to state, then you know, or sorry, if he did, he is coming to state. You know, coming to state, he has an opportunity because because we have a lot of gaps to fill and that he could be a big piece of. So. Uh, but and then they it just it just more bugs me because Cliff Godwin makes the statement and then they do this and so it just goes back to hand to hand saying listen there's yeah. it, it's 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 the most obvious saltiest moment I've ever seen and I would hope and pray that 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 uh, I can't even think right now I'm 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 like like just so thinking through Rain my head about this fuming. but but Avent, but I I would hope and pray Avent would never even consider a move like this like not even like a thought in his mind. I, I really hope that so because it, it it's it's disgusting in my head. So, yeah. um, but anyway, y'all. So I know we've gone way over time, but first of all, thank you all so so much again. Really do appreciate all the amazing support, y'all. And uh, again, this was a lot of fun having the whole Tuffy Talk crew here, man. Michael, congratulations once again. Thank uh, you. And, uh, you know, again, thank you all so much for tuning in. So make sure, again, we have our Gus Ritchie interviews uh, coming out Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. So to make sure you do not miss out on those, hit that free subscribe button, y'all. Hit that button right now. Hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we release any new NC State content, which is completely free to do. And if you enjoyed this conversation, do us a big favor. Hit that like button. And it really helps support us in the channel. So please do it if you if you don't mind. And then make sure you give us a follow Tuffy Talk now on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, y'all. But again, once again, y'all, Thanks again for everybody tuning in. We will see you all in Winston-Salem, and let's beat Wake Forest, y'all. Let's do it, y'all, and go Pack, baby.